Hi everyone, thanks for taking the time to interview me. Thanks to HealthTree and for everyone listening to this. My name is Rahul Banerjee, Assistant Professor of Medicine at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center in Seattle, Washington, also Assistant Professor of Medicine at the University of Washington. Um, and I'm here to talk about one of the topics that's nearest and dearest to my heart as a researcher and the bane of everyone's existence for many of you who are patients, which is dexamethasone. Some of you may remember, you know, that uh, you know Jenny Alstrom had written, a, you know, even a whole song about how much she hated steroids, like the methadone and myeloma. You know, I was at Health Street kindly invited me last year to speak about, you know, Dex, the hero or the villain of myeloma therapy, and that's really been a passion of mine because it's obviously like, you know, of all the things that we worry about as researchers, the dexamethasone is kind of a foregone conclusion. We've had Dex for. 40 years, if not more than that, in myeloma. We continue to use it once per week in our regimen. It actually was a patient-inspired trial led by Vincent Rajkumar as the academic affiliate that actually showed that it used to be DEX 40, 40, 40, 40 for four days in a row and repeat and repeat. Then he showed that DEX 40 once weekly was better than that, which makes sense but we haven't really adjusted anything since then. You know, even modern studies today continue to use DEX 40 milligrams once per week. Many of you listening to this have been on DEX 40 milligrams once per week or 20 milligrams once per week for years. And so um, the oral presentation I'll be presenting tomorrow was the sub-analysis or second analysis of SWOG data. SWOG is a very large cooperative group that runs many trials. We looked at two large trials of patients with myeloma, um, SO777 and S1211, and basically looked at, in those trials, that enrolled patients from 2008 to 2016, so well before this modern interest in dexamethasone sparing regimens emerged, how did those patients do when their dexamethasone was reduced during induction? In real life, hopefully many of you, if you've had side effects from dexamethasone, you've talked to your doctors and they've lowered the dose of dexamethasone accordingly. Um, but in clinical trials, they still can do it. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to actually make it happen, but certainly a possibility. And so what we did is we went back and looked and said, look, these patients were getting either in the trials, one of them was dex 40 milligrams once per week, as I alluded to. Some were getting dex 20 milligrams, like 20 and 20, pause, 20 and 20, pause, 20 and 20, pause. Same principle, what I would call high dose dex. And basically, we found that even in those patients treated on clinical trials, when people are nervous about adjusting doses, even though these trials were done almost a decade ago, before people really understood the side effects of dexamethasone that all of you tell us about now we know really exist, like cataracts, difficulty sleeping, you know, bone health issues, weight gain, et cetera, we found basically that for patients where dexamethasone dose was reduced during induction, no difference in PFS, no difference in how long patients remain disease-free or in remission for no difference in overall survival. We did find as a caveat that patients who had major dose reductions, like over 50% dose reductions, we did see a slightly worse signal towards decreased uh, length of remission, progression-free survival. The big caveat there is these are patients on clinical trials a decade ago. So for a clinical trial investigator to lower some dexamethasone is a big deal, and probably those patients were frailer and having a lot more side effects. But I think it shows something that if you were to ask any of us, like, hey, if it was your mother, would you keep them on dex 40 milligrams forever? I would say, no, of course not. I would lower it to 20 milligrams. 12, I would stop when they're in remission. And so we're trying to see that that kind of logic probably is true. We are obviously need to study this prospectively, so we are looking at more prospective dex sparing regimen. So either starting at dex 20 milligrams and not dex 40 milligrams, so that's five pills of dex and not 10 pills of dex per week or starting at the higher dose, because honestly, dexamethasone does have some benefits, but right? it's not totally the villain. It does help with bone pain. It does help to prevent injection reactions or infusion reactions from medications like Darzolex, Daratumumab, or Sarcleza, which is Ezetuximab. But saying, look, for the first eight weeks, let's get through it, use a dexamethasone to help push down the myeloma rapidly, prevent these side effects, treat the pain, but as soon as we see a response, drop the dex. Not just go down to the dose, drop it entirely. And so those studies are ongoing. We don't have randomized data there, but I don't think we need it. The other thing I should add from the study is almost two thirds of patients, even on this trial, did have some level of dex dose reduction. So it's happening. If it's not happening to you and you're having side effects, talk to your doctor about it because odds are very high that in the era of modern therapies like monoclonal antibodies and newer therapies and CAR-T, the dexamethasone that was the hero of our narrative for the last 40 years, Starting to become the villain, I would argue now after the first two cycles, it is the villain.